Good morning. Assuming you're watching this in the morning and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to American Truck Simulator. And this, this is almost where it all began. Okay, point of fact. Location-wise, we are nowhere near where my journey in American Truck Simulator began. That would have been, I believe, in California. And we are in Kansas. And this airport didn't exist in the game at that point. This aircraft may have still been flying at that point as well, but that's all by the by. I didn't use this particular color on my trucks and my trailers. I didn't have my own trailers to come to think of it. And you know what? I was doing quick jobs. But regardless, I started my career in American Truck Simulator in the Kenworth T680, now renamed to the Kenworth T680 2014. And the reason why I started getting into producing engine packs and modifying engines is all because I really wanted to get my hands on a Cummins X12. In this case, I'm using the X12 Efficiency. It's the 410 horsepower version. Uh, it's a multi-torque. So it's 1450 foot-pounds of torque in the lower gears, and I think 1650 in the upper. Yeah, a couple of gears in this case. I also wanted to get my hands on the Eaton Endurant um, 8D automated transmission, the heavy duty one. Not the extreme duty one, that's the 18 speed. This transmission has, well, 12 speeds and is available with a variety of final drives. And in this case, we're using a Eaton Endurant HD with a 3.25 final drive. Let's just take a moment to appreciate, well, I'm taking a moment to appreciate how far I've come in this game. All right, well, cool story. Let's get on with it. Let's jump in the cabin. Well, first things first, I'm gonna start the engine and I'm gonna shut the windows because this Antonov is getting a little loud. I don't think we had openable windows back in the day. So, um, quick look around the cabin here. There's not so much to see. Um, it's a day cab. So uh, we've got a pretty plain interior here. We've not got much in terms of accessories. We've got a fire extinguisher on the floor. Um, but yeah, this is uh, largely how I started my, my game. Um, in terms of specification, like I say, we've got a 410 horsepower Cummins. We've got steel wheels. Let's switch back here. Uh, we have advanced steel on the back. That's cool. Um, my trailer is my own trailer here. Um, and today we're hauling 40,000 pounds of transformers. Not the most exciting of transformer. When I was a kid, a transformer was a cool toy. Uh, these days, this appears to be um, electrical components, I suppose you might call it. We're using a double. Um, I don't mind doubles, don't mind singles. Sometimes I prefer a double trailer because it's a little bit more maneuverable and you don't have to do difficult parking at the end of it. Um, spec wise this truck largely mirrors the first Kenworth I ever bought in the game so it's a day cab um, I don't think I actually had the aero package back then so I couldn't afford it and we do have that today um, but we have the uh, known as the duty uh, mirror package so basically just the the grays gray plastic and the side skirts so I'm gonna jump in back into the cabin uh, let's get it running there we go Okay, uh, we're going to do lights on for safety today. Uh, let's put it into drive. So it's a 12 speed um, and it's moving us off in first. This isn't the heaviest of cargoes, but okay. Okay, let's put my four ways on. Now, if you've been following the game, um, you'll probably remember that I've had one or two performance issues with my machine. In fact, I've spent a week um, trying to get performance back to the way it was a week ago where the last well it would have been Friday it was a week ago on the day that I'm recording this I went to my machine and um, ran ATS and it ran horribly I went from a very smooth frame rate to 20s maybe dipping into 30s if I rain now, it's not performing very smoothly at all. I'm hoping that that will sort itself out. Because I can flick through PowerPoint slides quicker than this. <clears throat> right. The X12 has the privilege of being my oldest engine definition. I've done a good number of miles on it, but it's, it's definitely uh, it's the older one. And it likely hasn't... Um, 
Well, let's just say that the, the newer definitions um, have benefited from a lot of testing miles. This one a little bit less so, but it should do okay. I'm hoping that this performance sorts itself out because this is really lagging. We're using stock sounds today. Uh, might even be international 900i sounds. <laughs> or even using the British navigation system. Turn left. Rather than the rusky dog. Okay, we're on the way. We have a custom dashboard modification installed here. I'm going to just set my cruise to 65. Optimistic at this point it may seem. To merge here. So let's hope people let me in. Yep, they do. And already the, already the speed's gone down to 40. So why the X12? I like the idea of um, a, a smaller capacity engine, a, a, a mid bore, if you will. And uh, Cummins um, are, are a logical place to start in the game because, well, let's face it, Cummins have engines available for almost every truck. Keep right. And then so exit right. logically, it would make sense to go with. Uh, I don't know if the other market leader. Um, that might depend on on exit how you consider right. a market leader, maybe. But they certainly have um, a lot of Left. engine available for a left. lot of manufacturers. I'm gonna take my exit here. Then. Exit left. So okay. I'm gonna feed in the power here um, and get it up to cruise. Let's tap resume, put the cruise to 60, there we go. Okay, so this custom dashboard is telling me I've got three, roughly three and a half hours to go until I reach my destination, and I have uh, five and a half hours left before I've got to take a break. I'm just going to double check that. Yeah, oh no, I've got five and a half hours before I uh, take, before, I, before this cargo is due to arrive. And I can't see where my next rest stop is, but because I'm in the way, but that's fine. Keep left. Go ahead and merge left. I have a train in the distance, but doesn't bother us. We're on the highway now. One of my favourite colours. This colour was taken from a an old Volvo I saw at a truck stop in Central Texas, and I took a picture of it and matched the colour codes. Um, put it in, into the game. I, I, I like it. Uh, and I even, because uh, I could, I can afford it these days in the game, um, match my trailer to, to be the same colour as well. And the irony of having the aero package or the, the, the roof um, deflector is not lost on me. On one, it, it's not the most aerodynamic of cargoes. And two, it's very low. So it's a little bit pointless. But um, at least the uh, aero package comes with the, um, the roof lights integrated, which is nice. And uh, yeah, I guess that's what I can say. It's nice. So I've reduced the quality of a number of settings in my game um, in an attempt to keep the frame rate up to really where I want it to be, which is uh, close to 50. I am about well, I'm less than 30 right now. Let me see. Turn on my performance monitoring. I'm showing 25. That That is really not clever. And I have spent hours trying to reconfigure the game to get it back to how it was. And I've just not been able to do it. There's been no... Uh, I want to say no, no way. Just even turning turn everything down to... Um, basic level oh, it's lagging as well is just not helped the issue seems to be a CPU load but why would that happen overnight so maybe my machine is uh, is has an issue but I've refreshed the software the Windows and I've also reinstalled Windows to a brand new drive it's also the only game that's suffering from this and right now multi-core enhancements turned on on my um, system because that gives squeezes out a bit more um, clock speed 
very easy, cheap um, in terms of time to get more clock. So we're running at 5.1 gigahertz as opposed to 4.7. And yes, it's only 8.5% increase, give or take. But I'm still looking at minimal frames a second. Still, I'm going to enjoy the game for what it is, and some of that will be because um, I'm recording the video, I, I'm, I'm sure, but why would I go from 60 to 20? There's only so many guides you can read and follow the instructions to not, not get a result before you, there's this, what has suddenly caused my CPU usage to spike. And I should talk a little bit about that. So I am not an expert in how uh, Prism 3D, which is a SCS game engine, in how that works. Nor am I really an expert in computer hardware or how Windows works. But what I can tell you from experience and having read the forums that correlate with what I see, the game loads one CPU call. So it doesn't matter if you have um, 64 cores, each has got two threads. Um, only call zero appears to be the one that is loaded up. And looking at my machine, yep, call zero is at almost 100%, depending on when you look at it. Great. So there's no more performance to come. Now I have two other right. calls and potentially loaded. Right. But the limiting factor is that single thread performance. Right. Maybe I could turn off hyper-threading and that might give me a bit more of a boost in performance, but I don't think it will. As far as graphics go, I yes, I'm using an older generation card. This is a NVIDIA 3080 Ti. It handles most games okay until we start throwing things like Cyberpunk at it. And then, yeah, you, you need more power. It's a 10th generation Intel Core i7, and um, it, it's a fairly solid hardware setup. I wouldn't say it's uh, cutting edge, it wasn't in its day, but it doesn't need to be. But some games, two games, three I suppose, bring it to its knees. Uh, Cyberpunk, Euro Truck Simulator 2, and American Truck Simulator. Bit of a difference in, uh, in what those games are trying to do, but it is what it is. I still enjoy the game, but I'm a little disheartened by all the effort involved in rebuilding the damn operating system on a fresh drive. That's still having the issues. <sighs> anyway, back to the X12, yes. So, my first engine I really wanted to include in the game, and I did try a few mods that, that promised to have the engine, and they felt... too good to be true. And I'll come on to the sort of smaller engines in a little bit, but when you look at, uh, at the performance that I was getting from, I have to take a night stop pick and I thought, no, I can't follow a night stop. Okay. You look at the performance I'm getting from, say, Cummins X15 or ISX15, I should say, and the efficiency or lack of, and then you throw in um, a less powerful IX, uh, X12 even, to see similar acceleration, maybe even better, and using about half the fuel. Something wasn't right with that engine definition. So, a period of, uh, of study and um, getting into the mod files and just taking a look to see what's actually going on. And then you discover, okay, so the X12 I was playing around with that claims to be 400, 450 horsepower, Actually, it's a lot more. 20, 25, 30%. Now, if you're ex for me personally, right. personal yeah, opinion yeah, here, right. if you're expecting a 450 horsepower to really be producing 600, exit. that's okay. Right. But oops, it's my exit. Sorry, everyone. Oh, yeah, that's that was not a sensible thing to do. Yeah, so much for me being realistic, right? Anyway. 
So uh, I, I was disappointed by some of the engines that I was seeing because they were way overperforming what they should have been. You know, kind of front of this van, I think. I'm blaming my low frame rate. <clears throat> and sometimes I want to drive like a crazy man in ATS, like maybe now. But usually, I want to feel that I am, I have a certain amount of power at my disposal, yeah. torque, and that's what I got. So I want to accelerate up a hill at the rate that will be appropriate for that class engine. So started to look around, see how I could make my own engines. And that took a bit of time, build my own engines, use the stock sounds. I am not a sound engineer, nor do I know my way out of an FMOD um, installation guide. That's okay. And then you discover, ooh, there are custom sounds for the game. Wow. Some custom sounds um, are simply fantastic. In fact, a lot of them are very, are very immersive or can be very immersive at the game. And you can change external uh, environment sounds, you can change transmission sounds, switch sounds, there's a whole lot of stuff you can change, it becomes very immersive. But what always seemed to ruin it for me was uh, a custom sound mod and a custom engine definition with a claim of, let's say, 450 horsepower, and it didn't feel like it had 450. It usually felt like it had 550 or, or, or more. Okay learn how to do definitions, learn how to use someone else's sound in the private mod, no problem. It's been a good adventure so far. It's just a real shame that um, something happened last week to my machine, that uh, to my installation, that just seems to have nerfed it. As for the transmissions, I know that SES got a lot of criticism for the stock uh, gearboxes that they include in the game. We've got a... wow, my steering's all over the place. We have a selection of uh, automated uh, gearboxes or automatic gearboxes. So, I'll just choose a lane, David. So the 10, the 13 and the 18 speed that come with this particular Kenworth, they're all automated. They're ultra, sh ultra shifts. You can use a clutch pedal if you want. And then you have your Allison automatics. So depending on the truck, there are either zero, two, or three. Those are full on automatics with a torque converter and all that jazz. Uh, and of course, any number of, of um, modded transmissions you can get. And as they've added, SCS have added new trucks. They've added new, um, new gearboxes, so Volvo I shift, the Mac M drive, the Detroit diesel 12 speeds, the DT, DA, DO, DB, OV, 2FC over 2. That's too freaking clever by half. Um, a lot of variety. And when they added the International Lone right. Star, they and added the Eaton right. Endurant. Well, this is interesting. In the real world, it doesn't have the best right. reputation, as I understand. But this isn't the real world, this is a simulation. So here we are with the Eaton Endurant at a 12 speed, a 12 speed and a 325 final drive. So as we've seen, that means that 70 miles an hour is about 1500 revs, which is uh, quite comfortable for the engine to maintain. What's going on here? Why are you changing lanes so much? Am I in the wrong lane? Oh, I see. Well, that's bizarre. I don't think he was meant to do that, but okay. Maybe he was. There's the Endurant uh, XD. That's the 18 speed. That's the extreme duty. Get back on the power. We've got a, got a green light. I think that was made available um, either early this year or late last year. That's early 2024 or late 2023. And uh, that's a that's a, another good transmission that I wanted to get my hands on for those more extreme hauling 
circumstances. This doesn't really count. This is only forty thousand pounds. Keep left and then turn left. So now my driver's tired. I'm right at my destination, and he's he's turn a day left. cap. So what's he gonna do? Find a hotel somewhere? I guess. Because there's no sleeping in the cabin here. It'd be very un uncomfortable, I think. Okay, let's go here. Right, and then turn right. right. Turn right. Shame that um, this car's in my way. If I had a bull bar, I could just maybe uh, encourage him out of the way, right? That's the Gark. It's a transport hub, I believe. Yeah, I mean, I guess Gark is railway something. Not sure what it stands for. It might even tell me on the sign if I got close enough. We'll see. Anyway, so, key benefit of the X12. Certainly the efficiency models, and to be fair, the, the, the productivity versions as well, they're efficient. Okay, let me explain what I mean by efficient. They get a good combination of fuel consumption, low mileage if you like, or, yeah, low, low mileage, together with um, reasonable performance. I'll find a new route. I've got no issues with how well this 410 engine has tackled this this way and its torque curve uh, very closely matches the real deal assuming the other physics in the game is close enough yeah this should be how well it, it will perform it certainly performs better than the gamers today though, that's for sure so it's keen to rev Check in here. Let's get my windows down. Yep, security check. Hang on, let's get a little, little closer. It's definitely me, fellas. All right, it worked. They let me in. Let's get my hazards on. So, where's the drop off? Looks like it's just over here. Yes, I'll just right in front of us at the moment so we'll merge to the right side of the lane oh I can see it right right there on oh, the way no that's just where I gotta check in okay seems to be nothing around us which is good okay well let's go over here we are finished, we are finished. wow that's kind of terminal good grief I mean, I haven't crashed today, at least in this recording, anyway. Ooh. Yes, I know you're tired. Okay, okay, okay. Right, where should I place it? Really? Right over here? That's not difficult, but okay. So I guess they're going to send a team of people to get the Transformers off, because... That's £40,000 across 10 items. That's 4000 That's a lot. That's like a... A suburban worth, an older suburban worth of, of mass in every single box. Wow. Mind you, I guess it's as big as the cabin, so if it's pretty solid electronics, it would make sense, but still. Okay, and there we are. Oops, put it into neutral there. Okay, so let's shut that off. I'm going to get my lights off. Actually, we'll uh, shut the engine down. Great. Well, that just about wraps up today's video, which was a meandering topic of um, why I got into mods and um, some unhappy grumbles about the state of the game running on my hardware. Um, and I can't seem to fix it. So, I don't know. Works fine for everything else I've tried. I like every, well, that said, Rendering video is also taking a time as well, and maybe there's a clue there that my CPU performance isn't what it should be. Maybe it's clogged, but my temperatures are absolutely perfect. There's no issue there, so I don't know. Anyway, my driver's getting tired. I better go. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.